I've tried a lot of different charcoals for making antique muzzle loading propellant. But as of right now, this moment in time right here, the carbon source that I've used to make the most powerful black powder thus far is toilet paper. What did you say? I know it sounds ridiculous, and that's because it is. But watch the whole video and tell me what you think. Now, a couple months back, we did a test where we used cork as our carbon source for our antique muzzle loading propellant. And it was uh, not impressive, to say the least. It was very sooty. It was reasonably powerful, but it wasn't, it wasn't all that great. Now, since then, I've had a bunch of people tell me that the cork I used was full of glue, which is probably the case, which explains a lot of the sootiness. But I asked people in that video, you know, what other kind of carbon sources would you like to see? What would you like to see us try? Let us know. And we've gotten a lot of requests, but one of the ones that I got over and over and over again was paper. Now, I asked these folks when they said paper, what kind of paper? And being a question like that that you would pose to the interweb, obviously the answer is toilet paper. <laughs> okay, you got it. Now, when I decided to do this, I just walked over to the cabinet, I grabbed a roll of toilet paper, I threw it in my paint can, and I tossed it into my wood stove, like I do with any kind of carbon source that I'm charring. And I didn't take this very seriously because I figured it would probably end up much like the cork. So, with all that being said, I made this powder exactly the same way that I've made all of my black powder for uh, maybe a year now. I charred it up the same way in my wood stove. I ran the same ratio of 771310. Uh, oh, I should mention that after I charred it, I did pull the cardboard tube out of the center and I did take the first layer of paper off because I didn't want that glue strip. But I ran the same ratio of 77, 13, 10. I ran it in my treadmill, treadball mill, uh, with brass media for 24 hours. I pressed it using the same press and the same dye that I've been using. In other words, I've done everything the same. I glazed it for 24 hours and we're using 3F, or we made it 3F. Now, I also do this with every batch of powder that I make. I check the density. I go over this in every video, but I'll go over it one more time. The easy way to do this is to take your measurer, set it to 50 grains, measure out 50 grains, and then weigh it to make sure that it's equal in weight and volume, which is about 1.7 grams per cubic centimeter, which is what we're shooting for. And I should mention that if that's what you're shooting for, if you're doing this, trying to replicate commercial grade black powder, you need to make sure your density is equal in weight and volume. So again, everything the same procedure, all the same method, all the same stuff, minus our carbon source, the only thing that's different. So here's how it went. Okay, so here's the uh, toilet paper black powder. Now that says 1780. And do you believe it? It says 1780. Wow. I don't know if I do. <laughs> okay. All right. Shot number two with the toilet paper powder. Okay. Seventeen eighty seven. Damn. Ha. I don't know. 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 I
All right, shot number three with the toilet paper. All right. Eighteen sixteen. What the heck? what? Toilet paper. Toilet paper. Yeah. Who knew? This does say half yeah, toilet paper. Okay. Last shot with the toilet paper. Okay. Eighteen oh three. Damn, it's incredible. I feel like I've been doing it wrong. Why toilet paper? Let's see how clean it is. Wow, that's tolerable. Oh, yeah. That's not bad at all. I mean, I don't think it's quite clean as the balsa. I, I, I know it's not, but that's four shots. That's tolerable. Yeah. Toilet paper. What the fuck? <laughs> that is ridiculous. Yeah, it's <laughs> ridiculous. Oh, we got to get all kinds of exotic wood. No, just use whatever toilet paper you got. <laughs> yeah. Shoot pretty clean. What are you looking for, Ed? That's after four shots. It's not the cleanest powder I've ever made, but it's certainly tolerable, especially with how fast it moves. <laughs> now, if you just watch that and you're thinking that I'm trolling you or I'm making this up or there's something must be wrong, I really understand because we were thinking the same thing. There's How is this performing so well? How is it so clean? How is it so powerful? And to answer your question, I don't really know. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know I'm doing it really, really well. <laughs> now... This stuff averaged 1,796 feet per second with a max spread of 36. And this is the most powerful black powder that I have been able to make using the dry method. Now, earlier when I was still using the CIA method, I was able to get powder that was about this speed, just a little bit faster than, than Swiss. But this is the first time in the first carbon source that I've been able to get a higher velocity, not by a lot, by about 20 feet per second, actually a little bit less. But that is Swiss velocity. And the spread is even tight. I mean, I, I, I don't know why it works so well. I, I even thought it might have been a fluke, but again, that's why I mentioned earlier that I did everything the same. I made it the same way. The only thing that's different is the carbon source. Now, you might be wondering what kind of toilet paper that is. And it is Cottonelle Comfort Care. I did not have high expectations for this powder at, at all. I certainly didn't think it would burn very clean because the cork didn't either. And I, again, assumed it would be much like that. And I certainly wasn't expecting it to outperform Swiss as far as the velocity goes. And as to why, I can really only speculate. Um, I did watch two videos before I filmed this on how toilet paper is made. And it's either made from recycled paper or it's made from fresh wood pulp. And I have no idea what kind of wood. Where they strip the bark off of it, they run it through a machine that turns it into what they call pulp. And then they squeeze it and press it and bleach it and all kinds of other stuff. They treat it with all kinds of chemicals. And again, that's why I thought it wouldn't perform well. And then they press it out into nice white puffy sheets. Now, one of the reasons why I thought it wouldn't be powerful 
was all of the washing and cleaning and chemical treatment that they do to the paper. Uh, about a year ago, my brother and I were experimenting with uh, washing our charcoal, and we used a few different kind of chemicals. We used DCM, denatured alcohol, 90-some-odd uh, proof isopropyl alcohol, and distilled water. And so we took our charcoal and we washed it and then let it dry, and then we made charcoal, or made powder, rather, with that. And the only thing it ever did that was really noticeable was just destroy the velocity. This was Alder Buckthorn that we were doing this to, so it should be in the mid 1700s, and we would get maybe low 1500s. And it did not matter what solvent we used. In fact, uh, water was the worst. It actually, it did it in the worst. But all it ever did was cost velocity and a lot of velocity. And if it did make it any cleaner, it wasn't noticeable at all. So I was kind of expecting the toilet paper to have a similar velocity, but maybe because it's not charred, it's still in basically wood form, uh, maybe it doesn't affect it like that, being how they treat it and make the actual toilet paper. I don't know, but again, this is the most powerful black powder that we have made so far. Now, I had about, I think, 150 grams of 3F powder, a, a whole brass flask full of 3F, and I shot the entire brass flask full of powder. And I also used it in my 44 Navy. I was having such a great time shooting and trying it at 180 yards. I had enough for two shots through my 44 Navy, and I did get chronograph footage of one, and so here's that. Yeah, this is the toilet paper powder. Wow. So the last one was 1,086. I got enough for one more shot. Thousand forty-seven. Bitchin', swell. Yeah. That's with thirty grains and a four-five-four four round ball, and it averaged almost a thousand fifty. So, again, very powerful and pretty damn clean. I often get comments from folks saying, you know, why don't you use a spit patch? You know, you don't need to swab your barrel every three or four shots. You don't have to do that. Yeah, thanks, but I find that works really well for me. I don't like the spit patch thing because I don't like carrying soggy cloth in my mouth. That's gross. That's a gross way to live. That's all. I'm just weird about it. So if you were using a spit patch, you could probably shoot all day like that. Because I put four shots through it and I would swab it every four shots and I would swab it. And that's how it would come out looking that dirty right there, which again is absolutely tolerable. And especially with the performance as far as the velocity goes and the spread being nice and tight, very consistent, burning, powerful powder. That is a freaking win in my book. Let me know what you guys think. Why, why would toilet paper work so well? Again, Cottonelle Comfort Care, I should say. I can't speak for Charmin or any of the other outfits. Let me know what you think. Again, I can really only speculate. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.